Hi, welcome to No Water River. I'm Renee, and I'm sure you know by now that I love to read poetry, but I also love to read historical biography. Today's guest puts two of my favorite things together in her novels and verse, many of which are about important figures in Cuba's history. Please welcome Newbery Award-winning author and poet Margarita Engel, reading selections from her latest book, The Lightning Dreamer, Cuba's Greatest Abolitionist. Hi, I'm Margarita Engel in Clovis, California, and I'm going to read from my new verse novel, The Lightning Dreamer, Cuba's Greatest Abolitionist. I'll start with the historical background. In the United States, northern abolitionists were able to speak out against slavery in public. The Spanish colony of Cuba was different. With no part of the island free of slavery, censorship was harsh and penalties severe. The most daring abolitionists were poets who could veil their work with metaphors. Of these, the boldest was a young woman named Gertrudis Gomez de Avellaneda. Her childhood nickname was Tula. The first poem I'm going to read is not right at the beginning of the book. It's one where she's a teenager and she's tormented by her emotions. Visions. The night is filled with fierce spirits and gentle ones. Invisible beings spin and moan. Floor, ceiling, and walls whisper, wail, and shout. Phantoms beg me to transform my strange dreams into stories. Words burst and fly past trees in the garden. I rise up out of a nightmare and grasp a feather pen, feeling winged. In the next poem, she talks about different kinds of poetry, different aspects. I study verses with a drum beat rhythm like pounding music. Other poems are sea waves, calm and soothing. Just as often, poetry is a free dance of birds in air swooping and dipping in surprising directions. I discover a mystery in each verse, the stillness between words. And I feel like the stillness between words was especially important for poetry that's being used as a metaphor for expressing uh, one's emotions about something like slavery when you're not allowed to talk about it openly. And I'd like to end with one of the things that she did as a child when she was only 10 she helped set up uh, an orphan theater where she helped organize orphans to uh, act in her own plays as well as those of others. I continue to dream up my own set of rules for life, for poetry, for the orphan theater. In my plays, all are equal. Each orphan receives a speaking role because every child has a voice that must be heard even if adults only listen while children are perched on a stiff wooden stage, chirping like new hatched birds that have not yet learned how to sing. And then finally, the voice of the orphans. Tula's theater is merciful. It helps us forget who we are. We stitch costumes of scraps decorated with beads of laughter. We paint wooden sunsets in the false fronts of imaginary houses. Each swoop of a paintbrush turns into our own magical dance of celebration. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed The Lightning Dreamer. And uh, if you have any questions or would like to learn about my other books, please visit me at my website, www.margaritaengel.com. And I look forward to reading whatever you write.